Everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Gumi Berry and specifically my plans for what I'm going to be doing with these Gumi Berries. Um, I have gotten a chance, an opportunity to taste quite a few things throughout my yard this year. Things that have been growing here for years that just have never fruited. Um, things like my apricots, things like the honeyberry, I got a really good handle on. Things also like the gumi berry. Um, and I've realized how good and bad certain things are. Uh, for one, the bush cherry as an example, that's not something I really want to grow anymore. In fact, cherries in general, I think are a bit more effort than uh, what I'm willing to put in. And what I'm getting out is not really, I think, that rewarding. Whereas these bush cherries here are beautiful. Nothing bothers them except for the birds occasionally. Uh, the birds are not even really in love with the fruit. If you put a net over it, which is very easy to do because it's it's usually like a six foot by six foot bush, very easy to protect. Uh, it also fixes nitrogen in the soil. So I've noticed for certain that things like this honeyberry here have established a lot quicker than all the other honeyberries in my yard. The same thing here with this gooseberry. Uh, these things are just taken off. And I think a lot of it has to do with probably the comfrey here, but also the nitrogen fixation of these gumi berries I think is actually something really special. Um, something overlooked. And I wasn't really a big firm believer in it, but now I am. And certainly um, these berries as well, the, the fruit itself is really to die for. Um, I'm a big fan. I think it's somewhere around a six or a seven out of 10 compared to some other fruits. You know, it's not gonna be better than a strawberry but what I've learned is that I really enjoy snacking on them. I really like them. Um, I also really enjoy when they're dried. They can dry on the plant and they actually turn into a gummy bear. Um, and my original estimation of this fruit, somewhere around a six or a seven, I think they're now an eight, maybe even a nine. When you put them in that dried state, which is not easy to do. I mean, they'll dry right on the plant for you, no problem. They're also extremely early. They're like my third or fourth earliest fruit in the yard. Um, or you can take them in and put them in the dehydrator. They come out just really well. Um, and for me, it just seems like a no-brainer. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm actually coming in here with the pruning shears and we're gonna take out some of this growth. Um, reason being is that I wanna propagate this. I want to start the cuttings now if I can rather than waiting this winter time. I want to see if I can get a plant somewhat established over here by this pawpaw. Um, actually there's two pawpaws here in the same hole and finally in their fourth year they've really started to take off and uh, what I'm thinking is that I should have probably had the comfrey here like I've had but also something fixing nitrogen right next to it. So we're gonna put, I think a gumi bush over here somewhere. And this will then obviously aid with building the soil up in this mound. This mound up here is horrible. All the way down against the fence is just the worst soil. I remember when I was a kid, my parents wanted to put this fence in and in order to get the fence in, we needed to build up this nice berm. We went to the store we got tons of dirt and just stuck it over here. It is the worst quality soil, I have to say. Uh, so this whole area of the yard really doesn't grow well. Nothing grows well, even the grass doesn't grow well. So what I've decided is really just to focus on building up the soil. We have a Hugo culture bed that we put in here. We've got the nitrogen fixers and the gumi. We've got comfrey. I got comfrey all over the place over here. Um, and really, realistically, it wasn't something that I foresaw with the pawpaw and just them having such a big issue growing over here. So we're gonna try to grow as much comfrey in this little area, I think, that we can. And then also put down mountains of mulch. I just got some a bale of straw. That's gonna be for a different purpose, but we are supposed to be getting wood chips hopefully soon. A shipment of wood chips in and that is going to be laid down all up in here 
to help build this fertility in this area. But I think the Gumi is also gonna be one of them that's gonna help. And we're gonna just, again, just cut off some of this. One, because I don't like the way that it's kind of growing in this direction too much. Um, also, I kind of want this thing to be a bit lower. Um, underneath this kiwi vine, it's really going to get out of control, this kiwi vine. It's already getting out of control, and it's only in like its second year now. Um, so I'm already thinking ahead a bit, and I've known that I needed to kind of make some adjustments that now that this is here with everything that's underneath it. Um, so we are going to cut out some of this top growth right about there. And then also the variety right next to it, this is, um, man, which one is this? Red gem, I think. Let me look at the tag down here. This one's called Sweet Scarlet. And then the other variety I have is called Carmine. And without a doubt, Carmine puts out berries that are about four times larger than Sweet Scarlet. So Sweet Scarlet's a waste of my time. You know, other than the fact that it fixes nitrogen, the berries are nowhere near as, you know, I think worth it in my mind. They're just so small. The amount of pit to the flesh ratio is just so small that it's not really worth growing. So we're gonna rip this one out. I'm gonna actually come in here with a spade and take this whole thing out. We could put something else here if we want in the future. I'm probably gonna cut back some of this comfrey as well. And then we're gonna also propagate take off the the cuttings up here and then place them over there in that section over there by the pawpaw and see if we can then get more of these gumi berries going and believe it or not this is not even really the sunniest environment i do have apple trees here and kiwi but this area of the yard only gets about five to six hours of light um, in that corner it's probably even less because the pawpaws, in my mind, at least that was the opinion of many, that they liked the shade. And now I've come to find out that it's actually the opposite, is that they really prefer more sunnier conditions as they get older. You can see actually some of the berries still on here that got attacked by the birds, and they're pretty much dried. What's ever left, whatever is indeed left on here, I'm gonna pull one off. You can see that right there, that this is like, let me zoom in for you guys. It's actually dried. Um, whatever is left on the uh, the berry there. And this is really like a, like a gummy bear. I'm not kidding. So for me, that's what I want. And that's what I want more of in that particular bush. So let's do that now. I'm gonna cut off a part of this here just to show you guys exactly how this is gonna work. I'm gonna leave this shoot here and also this shoot down here. And we're gonna cut off this, this, and everything above what we just mentioned. So that's gonna come off. And then I'm gonna just take this, and I don't know how well these propagate from cutting, but I imagine they're not very difficult. At least it's gonna take some time and getting this in the ground when it's warm is gonna, I think, really help. And I think also putting this in a shadier position here is also going to help. So what I'm going to do is actually, I think I'm going to cut off most of this new growth here and here and here. And we're going to put in multiple cuttings of this in the ground. Let me put you guys down and show you guys exactly how this is going to work. Sorry, I'm just messing with the uh, tripod. Ain't that awesome, holy crap. Okay, so I'm gonna take off these lower butt, these lower leaves here. Probably, I don't know, let's leave about, let's leave about six or seven. And we'll do that on these other ones here. Now, I might need some rooting hormone, but I think with enough time of these things just being in the ground, it'll be all right. Uh, I don't know how this is exactly going to work out, but I'm hopeful. And then what also I'm going to do is come in here and score this bark a little bit. 
The highest success rate is probably gonna be this cutting because this is one year old wood here. This is new growth. So we're probably have a low chance of getting this thing to work. What I wanna make sure now is that this is a reasonable distance away from the pawpaw because the pawpaw are gonna get quite big. And this gummy berry will probably get to about six foot by six foot in time. But I do want it relatively close because I need it to fix that nitrogen. So I think right here is probably a decent little spot. So we're just gonna stick these in the ground. Let me, uh, let me get you guys a better view. I'm just gonna stick this in. I think probably zooming in would help you guys see better. And honestly, I probably should get myself a shovel. That's what I'm gonna have to do, is I'm gonna try to bury as much of this as possible. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to get myself some sort of uh, spade or some kind of shovel here, my hori hori, and I'm gonna drive this in as far as humanly possible and probably up to maybe here. So, you know, if I zoom out real quick for you guys, probably up to about here, I'll bury. And then everything else will be above, above grade, above the ground. And those I just, you know, I'm crossing my fingers. Who knows if they're gonna work out, who, you know. But we can always come in here and take cuttings again. Maybe we can apply rooting hormone if those don't take. And then we can try it again in the winter time or in the early spring. Um, and then I'm not gonna show you guys this on camera, but I'm gonna rip this one out. This is not a variety that I want. And uh, this is a space in which is gonna be problematic in the future for this kiwi vine. So we are gonna get rid of this. And I know it is providing some nitrogen. It's fixing some nitrogen in the soil, especially into a hugo culture bed, which is largely infertile for the first couple of years until this these large logs here that are underneath start to break down, but I don't think that's an issue anymore. I think the fertility is fine. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do is cut this guy out. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this one and uh, I hope you all enjoyed this and we'll talk to you all soon, all right? See you for tomorrow's video.